I know, I got a mouthful of cat. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today, I am making a really fun 1940s nightdress. This is a part of a collaboration with a bunch of other folks. So a vintage vanity reached out to me and asked if I wanted to partake in a collab. She kind of mentioned basically how we're going into the doldrums of winter, which is true, and how it would be fun to do something called loungeuary to make some fun pieces for lounging around the house, which is what at least I do during January, February. March, I guess, is not an airy, but I also am pretty housebound at that point. So that is what we're doing here today. You can check out everybody else who is on the collaboration, which are some really exciting names. A lot of these are people who I've watched for a really long time, um, including a vintage vanity, so I was really excited when she reached out. You can check out everybody else who is participating down below and I believe there will also be a playlist which I will link down below as well. So let's now dig into the pattern and the project materials. So I'm super excited to do this because actually I've had a few projects I've been really meaning to get around to that are loungewear. This one that I'm doing today will specifically be 1940s loungewear. So let's take a look at it. This is kind of like a robe nightgown something combo. It basically has a lot of gathering in the front and a little tie to like define the waist, but otherwise it looks super comfy. So I'm making something really close to this blue version here on the pattern. So I'm going to be using really lovely blue satin that I thrifted at some point, so I have no idea the content type. And I'm just taking a risk and not washing it, which is maybe a move, I don't know. I've never sewn with satin before and I'm a little bit anxious because uh, I know it slips and it slides and it's not very fun. So fingers crossed I can do it, <laughs> we'll see I guess. And I'll learn along the way, I am gonna, if I need to, break out my walking foot. We'll sort of see, I'm sure cutting this is gonna drive me nuts. And then for the trim, I don't remember where this trim originates from, but it's just some plain white pre-gathered trim from somewhere. It's technically not as wide as the trim in the pattern is, but I'm trying to use what I have on hand. I was gonna get really excited and make like a whole quilted robe and then I'm like, no, you need to use the fabric you have. You've always been meaning to make this dress. So we went to the stash. So yeah, that is the plan for this project. I'm super excited to dive on in and we are gonna hit over to cutting now. So I am cutting the fabric. I am using the Thanks I Made Them powder weights. I really, really like them and they're a black owned business and you should definitely support them if you're in the market for a new pattern weights or any pattern weights, I guess. I didn't own any before this. And for satin, these were an absolute lifesaver. I don't know if it's because I was using pattern weights, but I feel like cutting the satin was way less of a nightmare than I expected it to be. Here you are seeing me cut with margins so I can French seam this. Because this is such a fray fabric, I am planning on French seaming because it would be an absolute nightmare not to. Like this would just fall apart and it would shed everywhere and be absolutely terrible. As always, Spooky is very involved in pattern cutting and she really did a number on this pattern and it made me very not happy with her. Because this channel is pretty much about spooky and not sewing, I decided to take some footage of her playing in the satin. She adored this satin. I'm trying to figure out how to make her like a toy that's almost like crumpled up satin that she can play in because she loved it so much. She did put some snags in my satin and I wasn't maybe the happiest with her but she absolutely adored playing in it. And so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about how to make her some satin. Uh, and so if you have any ideas of what type of thing I could make her, let me know. Now there is no longer enough satin for her to play in, so she has migrated elsewhere. This was just a lot of yardage because it was so long. Did notice, which I'm bummed about, you can kind of tell in this footage, but there was sporadic fading on this where it was creased um, from storage. I noticed it when I ironed it, but I went ahead with making this project because I haven't worked with satin, so I figure working with a satin that doesn't really like matter that much or is destined for a landfill I would be good enough. And since I don't really plan on wearing this outside the house, I feel like it's the perfect way to use a satin like this. I don't really want to throw things away that I don't think are necessary to throw away, and the fading doesn't hugely bother me and so I went ahead with making this project. Hi, Spooky says good morning. So we are on I guess technically day two of this project. Oh that, that was a lot of butt I and mean, she only has half a butt. That's what happens when you miss a leg when you're a cat. But anyway enough about Spooky's butt. Uh, so yesterday 
I got my fabric cut. I put it off for three days, four days. I don't know. I put it off for a while. I was de deeply frightened of this satin and that I believe is acetate because I burned it and it smelled like vinegar. And in theory, that means acetate. I don't know. So I cut into that. It was not nearly as bad. It only took, I think about like a hour for me to cut out. So I have all of that. <laughs> God, spooky. I know, I've got a mouthful of cat, thank you. She's making it very hard to drink my tea this morning. She really loved playing in the satin. She really loved how it glided. So I'm debating, figuring out if I can make something out of some cheap satin for her that I think she would like, because that is the type of person I am. I love my cat and she gets the best. I have eaten a solid breakfast of crap, cap, of Captain Crunch with berries, which I never got to eat sugary cereals as a kid, so now I do it as an adult because I can. Now we're just gonna kick off and get into the sewing. I'm gonna start with all of the side seams and back seams and stuff like that, as well as like setting the gathering lines, I guess. What I will note real quick before we continue is I am gonna alter this pattern. So this is supposed to be full on robe where it can completely open in the front. I'm actually gonna make it more of a house dress. My favorite house dress is like a bathrobe, but it zips in the front. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually sew the front clothes and put in a zipper in the front. Uh, this could be a disaster since this is my first time working with satin and there's a chance that zipper will be absolute garbage, but it will make it more wearable and functional for me. And that is ultimately what matters in this garment. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the project. So first I am working to seam up the ties. This was actually incredibly easy to turn. Usually I hate turning things like this, but because it was satin and so slick, it was a very fast turning job for turning it inside out. And then I really enjoyed pressing this satin. It actually presses to be really, really crisp. After the ties, I then started to sew all the really long seams that go up and down the dress. So like the front, the back, the sides, and I sewed all of those in French seams. And here I'm doing the zipper. I just pinned this one in because in my head, I just, could hear on Project Runway them saying how satin shows all your pinholes and flaws and mistakes, which is like kind of true and kind of not true. But I could hear that my whole time in my head in this project and I was so worried about it. So I was trying to like minimize how much I was basting things compared to how much I might usually baste this. However, despite not basting this zipper in, this is one of the best zippers I've ever done. I don't know if it's because the satin had a good weight and was really crisp and it made it a lot easier, but I did such a good job on the zipper, which is great since it's front and center and improvised because this actually is supposed to be a closed robe and I made it a kind of house dress with a zipper up the front because that is my preferred style of robe. I actually don't really prefer like a tied on robe. And then here I am just basting the ties in where they go according to where I marked them. Good morning. So today we are Working on the yoke and the sleeves. We're getting pretty close on the dress. I'm getting pretty excited because it's turning out way better than I anticipated. I'm actually now a little bit more bummed about the fade lines. So I'm gonna get everything put together. Uh, that means also figuring out the lace trim, which I'm a little bit nervous, but also excited for. I feel like I got sewing the satin down enough that I'm ready to do kind of the more complicated bits. Um, and wrap this guy up. Yeah, I just have some things to figure out how, when, what I'm doing. Um, in case you're wondering, no, this is not wine. I, I would love to drink a glass of wine at almost, well, it's now almost noon. Where did the time go? But yes, this is not wine. I recently got into sparkling grape juice, which I don't know what that says about me or what's wrong with me, but uh, I really like it. And I also love that if anyone is observing me, they are seeing me pour what looks like a glass of wine in the mornings, uh, which I just think is very funny because I always pour it into wine glasses because I don't know, it makes me laugh and that's really all that matters here. And you might see Spooky running around. I think she's gonna be in her little harness because I think I'm gonna try to take her for a walk later. I've been working on leash training her and she's been doing really well. Um, after I took her home at the airport, she really loved being around on the leash and seeing all the like sights and people. So I think I'm gonna see if I can get her to enjoy going on walks. So we are now gonna dive into, I think I'm gonna start with the yoke. I'm gonna start with the sleeve assembly. I think I'm gonna start with the yoke. Here I am getting started on the yoke. Um, so I'm sewing the shoulder seams at the yokes together for both the yoke and the yoke facing. I am pressing the yoke. Obviously I pressed open what I had already sewed, but then it was really important to press around the seams that are gonna, like the way you top stitch the lace on, 
you need to have a really, really nice edge press, which again made me really like this fabric because it pressed so crisply. I found this just really enjoyable to work with. And then here I have basted that folds down um, despite the fact I know the satin will probably show it at the end, but I did baste it down anyway. And then I am just pinning the lace around this and then once the lace is pinned i'm then going to baste that down and then after that i am going to top stitch everything to the rest of the dress that i had made the previous day and now that the yoke is on let's move on to the sleeves here i am working on the cuff where i was instructed to stitch the bit of lace with a half inch on each side i will stitch the second piece of the cuff on top of it and that will make a nice little lace sandwich where then when you turn it inside out the lace will pop out for an edge along your wrist. Here I am actually pressing the cuff after I have done that. This is again very satisfying and it's even more satisfying with the little lace sticking out the bottom. I'm super pleased with how this is going so far. And then sorry for the really out of focus footage. Uh, my camera apparently really adores my new iron more than it likes my sewing. Here I am just gathering the sleeve to tuck into that cuff. And then here I am actually setting in the sleeve, this was the worst ever. I don't think I have ever done such a terrible job, but you can't see these sleeves because of the lace over the edges of the sleeves. And that is a very, very good thing because they're awful. They're the worst things I've ever sewed. Well, good morning, folks. I was supposed to finish this yesterday, but here we are. It's a new morning, it's a new day. It is approximately 10.30. We're getting started earlier today. Turns out noon is not enough time, especially when you want to take your cat for a walk and that takes a little bit of time. We did excellent, by the way. I'll maybe insert some footage somewhere in this video. Um, but this is where we're at. You can see it's looking like a full garment. We're really close to being done. I only have to really put on the finishing touches, which is putting in the facing. As you can see, this is still a raw edge. And then um, I need to put some bias tape in the armholes and then Got a hem the whole sucker. Um, it's still a raw hem at the bottom. I'm trying to figure out like how many inches I'm taking it up because it is a little bit long when I'm barefoot. We will finish this today and I'm hoping to also shoot the reveal today, but we'll see if that works out. TBD. All right, so here today I am just cutting some bias. And so I am just making the bias for what is going to finish the sleeves. I'm just cutting across the bias with my rotary cutter and I'm cutting it an inch and a half wide because I don't need it much wider to do what I need to do with it. And then here I am ironing first the tape just to like lay flatter and nicer. And then I am running it through one of my bias tape makers that I really like. Look at how satisfying that is. I love making bias tape. And then here you can sort of see me just pinning the bias tape onto the unfinished edge inside along the sleeve. Uh, I will then stitch that down. And then after it's stitched open, I will then just fold it over and stitch it closed. And then I will have a completely finished and nice seam that won't get fluff all in my armpits. Here is me actually stitching that while it's folded over. It is not the most beautiful job, but it doesn't super matter because these sleeves are already really ugly. And so I just need them to not fray and become a big old mess for me. And then here I have sewn the yokes together and I am now just pressing it to look nice. The facing will sit inside the garment. I am also just pinning that down to then go back in and hand sew. And this really helps me have absolutely no raw edges in this garment. It looks really nice on the inside. I'm pretty excited about it because this is a fabric that can quickly make the inside of a garment feel like a disaster. And then my last step before the reveal is just cutting off the hem to the height I want. I ended up cutting it about five inches to hit a height where I think I can like move around and not have this get in the way.
Alrighty, you have seen the reveal. Sorry about the weird lighting. Um, my apartment, although it has all these windows, they're not placed in a way that makes it easy to show things off. But I hope you still enjoyed looking at this really fun piece. So here it is in all its very shiny glory. I'm very happy with this and I already test drived it. After I wore this for the reveal, I then proceeded to clean and vacuum my whole house. I will say this is quite warm. I got very sweaty. It was not uncomfortable. I had full like arm range of motion. I didn't trip over the hem a ton. It was fine wearing it like outside. So for what I made it for, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. I definitely like wearing it and I really made it for the colder months because sleeves, obviously. I do think I will make this again and I think I will make it out of a flannel material next time, like a light flannel. I think that would make an even cozier one for those really, really cold winter months. Um, would also say uh, the downside kind of of this fabric is it reminds me of a little bit of a graduation robe, which is like, uh, I don't know. I think it's because of the zipper in the front and just like the way the yoke is here, it kind of feels like a lacy graduation robe for me. Overall, I'm really, really happy with this. I'm really happy with this being my first go at satin. I think I got a good handle on it. Like I kind of mentioned in the video, these sleeves are a mess, but it doesn't really matter because the ruffle covers it. There's very few times I've stitched something and all of a sudden the line just goes, da -da 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 -da, but this one it does. Um, so not my finest job, but you can't see it because it's under the ruffle, so it's fine. And then I think I forgot to mention that there is a slit up the front that I cut because this is a fully open robe and I wanted to give myself that dynamic range of motion. I will also note, um, I absolutely adore the little pearl button I put on this. I actually wish I put two on which I guess it's never too late, but there's not really space for two. Then I love these little lacy cuffs. I actually think I'll steal the sleeves from this for other patterns, because I think this is really nice. And then I have things that I'm looking ahead making that is going to be using a lining fabric that's slippery like this. So I think this was a really good practice run for me. I do actually want to show you guys the inside of this and flip it inside out because I'm really proud of how clean my seam work was. I mean, ignore the hem. The hem's kind of a mess. I kind of winged it and it was maybe not the best idea with um, satin. But inside, you can see all these French seams and like nice finishings including the sleeves. You can see the bound sleeves. Like this is a super clean garment inside and it won't have all that, someone was just staring at me from outside the window and it won't have all that like fluff hanging around. And yeah, you can see this nice facing. I'm also really pleased because I finally had the skills to make this. I actually, this was one of the first yardages, like bigger yardages of fabric I bought. And this was one of the first patterns I bought. I think it was the second or the third vintage pattern I had ever bought. And so it kind of feels good to come full circle and make this garment because if I had made it back when I bought it, I did not have the skill set to do this and I would have not been happy with how it turned out. Um, so with that, thank you so much to Jennifer from A Vintage Vanity for inviting me to be a part of this collaboration. I felt so honored. Like I said, I've watched her channel for a very long time. I'm very excited to be a part of this collaboration. You can find everybody else who's participating down below. Uh, super exciting, super fun. I'm so excited to see what pieces of loungewear that all of them make. I have a feeling we're gonna end up very 40s themed, but we'll see if somebody surprises me and we end up a little bit later in the decades. And then that is it for this video. If you would like to support me or my channel, you can do that by liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. And if you have the money to and desire to, I guess, you can always buy me a coffee over at Ko-Fi. It really helps me out. I put a lot of time and love into this channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!